Yeah. Hey everybody, this is Wilbit, and we're playing more Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Dual Destinies. We left our friend Apollo Justice, the mummy pirate, the one, the only, knocked out, rocked out, sitting on the floor. Not great. Good night, Alpha. Thanks for sticking with us. Phoenix has nothing to say. This isn't exactly how I envisioned the second day of this trial to start. But given how things ended yesterday... Good morning. Hmm. And the, everybody's giving each other silent treatment. Mood sure is tense. Not that that's any surprise. Huh. Oh, hey, did you read the paper this morning? Huh? The paper? That came out of left field. You can't read papers. You didn't read it? Then you don't know the big news. Somebody spotted an abominable snowman way up in the mountains. Tell me you know the difference between a paper and a tabloid, Athena. It might show up in the forest where you live, Junie. So you'd better watch out, okay? You really should read the story for yourself. I couldn't even begin to do it justice. Justice? Like Apollo Justice? <laughs> huh? Oh, poor Apollo. And it's all my fault. <laughs> Vina! <laughs> oh, Junie, what was I thinking? I'm so sorry! Yes, last time on Phoenix, on Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. What we found yesterday was not Apollo's dead body. Thank goodness. He'd been assaulted by someone with a blow to his head and was lying unconscious. We rushed him to the hospital right away, and it looks like he's going to pull through. But it was still quite a shock to stumble onto a scene like that. Is Miss Woods all right, Athena? Well, I managed to get her to stop crying. Now she's resting on that sofa over there. I guess she really feels responsible for what happened to Apollo. Poor Junie. She believes that the reason Apollo was attacked is because he was helping her look for something in that courtroom. Oh? Guess I can see why she'd think that. Don't blame yourself, Junie. By the way, how are you doing? How have you been? How you feeling? You feeling okay? Who, me? Yeah, I know you're concerned about Miss Woods, but are you alright? Me? I'm doing just fine, boss. I mean, yeah, I was a huge, it was a huge shock, but I'm all right. People who've studied analytical psychology are great at times like these. After all, they've learned how to control their own emotions, too. I basically don't have any anymore. Don't have any emotions. Ha <laughs> ha. Somehow I don't think it's as easy as she makes it sound. But there's no denying she's a real trooper. Apollo doesn't remember a thing, does he? Yeah, he can't recall anything from the time right before he was assaulted. He's got amnesia, probably. Nothing about what he was doing in courtroom number four or who assaulted him. The doctor said it's probably due to that hit he took to the head. The old Gilligan's Island coconut. Assaulted in a court of law and losing your memory at that. I know how that feels. Do you, Phoenix? I guess he does. But who in the world would do such a thing, huh, Mr. Wright? Grr, just wait till I get my hands on the coward who hurt our Apollo. Now, now, Athena. I thought you said you were in control of your emotions. Let's just focus on helping Miss Woods, okay? But I admit, I'm just as upset as you. Okay, boss, you're right. Apollo's assailant can wait until after we clear Junie's name. That's the spirit. Now, let's see. I'd better check the court records one more time before the trial starts. We got our badge, check. We got our autopsy report, check. Did we read, did we look this further? Oh no, it's just the picture. Yeah, we got that. 
Uh, we got the HH3000, the phony Fanty, we got the missing remote switch, we got the bomb support case, which has Lehu Zahur on it. Perfect. Perfect. Memory serves when I have more than six pieces of evidence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what pages are. Earth to Mr. Right, I'm ready wherever you are, whenever, however. All right, let's get ready to rumble. Oh, the attorney badge. With everything that happened with Apollo, I didn't have time for a proper investigation. You never do, man. I can't let that stop me, though. I have to get this right for Miss Wood's sake, and Apollo's too, and mine, my career. One day, one day I'll have a client who pays me. I've built my entire law firm. Everything that I have. Let's pop this up. Okay, district court, courtroom number five. Oh, this is nice. This is good. All rise. Court, court is now, court is now in, court is now in session. Court is now in session. Yeah. Court will now reconvene for the trial of Juniper Woods. The prosecution's ready, Your Honor. Always, I've been here all night. Didn't sleep. Kind of feeling bad about it. The defense is also ready, Your Honor. Now then, I believe I instructed the prosecution to further their investigation. Were you able to locate the remote switch in question? I'm afraid the remote switch is still missing, Your Honor. Let me switch to this here. There we go. Yeah, cool. Stick an ear out so I can hear. I must say I'm disappointed, Mr. Payne. Not angry, just disappointed. Uh, I apologize, Your Honor. Aha! Looks like the prosecution's just as unprepared as I am! Ha ha! Ha ha ha! There is a separate matter, however, that I would like to bring up during this trial. A separate matter? You say? And what might that be? I assume you're aware that another incident occurred during yesterday's trial? I'm speaking, of course, of the assault on Mr. Justice in the ruins of courtroom number four. Uh-oh. Why is he bringing that up? Yes, what a truly harrowing experience it must have been. Poor Mr. Justice. At the time of the attack, Mr. Justice was not alone, eh? Hey, oui. He was with the defendant, Miss Juniper Woods. He isn't going where I think he's going with this, is he? The prosecution wishes to indict Miss Woods on the charge of Mr. Justice's assault. What? What? She was in court at the time! She has such an alibi! She's got a crazy alibi! Order! Order in the court! Mr. Payne, the institute under deliberation here is the courtroom bombing. The assault on Mr. Justice has nothing to do with this trial! Ah, uh, but I believe there is a connection between this case and Mr. Justice's assault. Please take a moment to consider these facts. Both events occurred in courtroom number four. Boom. Here's a drawing that I just happened to make just now. This is the location in number four where the unconscious Mr. Justice was discovered, AOE. As you can see, it's quite close to where Detective Arm's body was found. Courtroom number four diagram added to the court record. The question is, why did the cop feel the need to maliciously attack Mr. Justice? Why indeed? What do you believe their motive to be, Mr. Payne? I believe Ms. Justice found something in that courtroom while Miss Woods was with him. Evidence that fingered her as the perpetrator of the bombing. You mean he found some incriminating evidence? Precisely. And so I surmise that the defendant picked up a piece of rubble and hit Ms. Justice on the back of the head in order to silence him. Juni would never do such a thing. She was devastated when we found Apollo hurt like that. Miss Sykes, please control your outbursts. Ahem. It is the prosecution's belief that by deliberating on Mr. Justice's assault, we will draw ever closer to the truth of the courtroom bombing itself. Very well. Miss Woods is hereby officially indicted on the charge of assaulting Mr. Justice. What? Why are you listening to Mr. Toupe over there? 
Although, considering our con conversation yesterday... I think Apollo might have figured something out. Hmm, wonder what it was. He told me. I'm gonna look for evidence to clear your name, Juniper. Maybe the two incidents really are related after all. I would like to start by hearing from the defendant herself. Very well, Bailiff. Please bring Miss Woods to the witness stand. Uh, I'm sorry. I can't seem to stop. <coughs> Miss Woods. Guess she's still really upset about Apollo. We'll have to use. We'll have to figure out her emotions, and then use that to tell her why she shouldn't have emotions. Miss Woods, you went to the ruins of courtroom number four with Mr. Justice, did you not? Yes, I did. Good, good. If you would, then please testify about what happened to the court. Do we get emotion? Do we get emotion things? Alone with Apollo. Ooh. Ooh, romantic. Ooh. During the trial yesterday, I was overcome by a fit of coughing. Apollo stayed with me, and we went to the courtroom ruins together. But then I was called back to this courtroom to give testimony. Apollo insisted on staying behind in courtroom number four. I swear I didn't attack Apollo. Why would I ever hurt such a kind person? So, Mr. Justice stayed by your side while you were feeling unwell. What an admirable young man. I thought his loud voice was his only outstanding feature. He may look like a little imp at times, but Apollo can be really nice, too. I hope she didn't hurt her wrist backhanding that one out. But one has to wonder, why did Mr. Justice stay behind in the ruins? I think Apollo might have figured out something. Might have figured something out. Something? What kind of something? Something to do with the courtroom bombing kind of something, I think. Oh, oh! New evidence for the case, was it? That's a very big kind of something indeed. I believe so. He mentioned looking for some evidence when I was called away. Just as I thought, there is a connection between the two incidents. But the defendant has told a very big lie, Your Honor. What lie is that? When she learned Mr. Justice would be looking for evidence, she attacked him. She attacked him to give herself the chance to destroy that evidence. No! I, I never... Miss Woods repaid Mr. Justice's kindness with violence. We found the proof of her foul deed there in the courtroom ruins. What on earth? Do you see it there in front of Mr. Justice's right hand? Witness the message he left us. It, it's written in blood. The most serious writing implement of all. W O O D S. What could that possibly spell? There's no way of knowing. Wait, wait, hold on. Isn't that? That's right, Joanna. It says Woods in capital letters. It's very easy to read. Your Honor, do you know how to read? What? I submit that Mr. Justice left us with the name of the attacker before he fainted. Uh, assault photo added to the court record. Was that there before? I don't think that was there before, was it? We Did, did we somehow not notice that? It seems really obvious. No, that can't be true. Why would Apollo write my name? Mr. Wright, the nerve of him leaving that message! Why would why would he do this? Hey, don't take it out on me! I don't understand it any more than you do. When we discovered Apollo yesterday. A Apollo. N no! We didn't even have a chance to rush over to him. As soon as security heard a thing to scream, they ran in and cordoned off the area. Oh, so they just didn't get over to look at it. Hmm. Hmm. After that, they were there in the courtroom number four with Apollo the whole time. We couldn't investigate anything ourselves and had to leave everything to the police. Still, I never thought they would find some bloody writing there. 
Now then, please begin your cross-examination, Mr. Wright. <laughs> I'm laughing at, um, Payne's face down there. Just this... It's funny to me. During the trial, I was overcome by a fit of coughing. Press, like you've been doing today as well. Do you always cough when you get nervous, Miss Woods? Y yes, it's the flowers. Cough, cough. Cough, cough. Mrs. Wright, please do not make Miss Woods nervous by pressing her so ruthlessly. But that barely even qualified as a quasi-question. Let's help her relax with a little small talk before we dive into the cross-examination. You know, ask her about her hobbies and her crushes and stuff. Her crushes? Really? I, 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 don't, I don't know if that's a good idea. I don't know. Apollo stayed with me and went to the courtroom. Let's see, went to the ruins together. Do you have a crush on Apollo? Is he your son? Why exactly did you go to the courtroom ruins? We went to look for my medicine to stop my coughing. My nervous medicine. Is it a medicine that makes you less nervous? Your medicine? Why would your medicine be in courtroom number four? I dropped it in the heat of the moment. Bum rap Riney. He was keeping my medicine safe for me. He has a little compartment that I can put things in, you see. Things like bombs. No, no, don't do that. Don't be the evil one. And Phony Fanty has the same type of pocket. That's where his bomb was inserted. I put my medicine for my coughing fits inside. Bum rap Riney. When I told Apollo about it, he said he'd help me go look for him. There was so much rubble in there, I was worried, but... There was no rubble or anything in front of the witness stand. So when we go inside, Apollo went straight there. And started looking for my Riney in that area. It was so nice of him to do that for me, in spite of all his energies. Apollo's so strong and kind, just like the trees of the forest. The way she makes him sound, you'd think Apollo was some kind of ancient god. Oh, wait. Oh. Oh, I get that reference. Hmm. So that's why you went to the ruins. I see. Hmm. That seems to be quite an important fact. Please add it to your testimony, Miss Woods. Ah, something new. Paul started looking for Bum Rap Riney near the witness stand where there was no rubble. Oh, have you missed Bum Rap Riney? Bum Rap Riney. He's got a shiny hiney. He's a rhino who won't listen to you be whiny. He's the Riney that makes sure that you don't get a finey if you get a false accusation and you come out finey. I don't know. I'm making this up as I go. I'm sorry. Pressing. Always be pressing. It's a stuffed animal. <laughs> the area around the witness stand? Are you sure about that? I I'm sorry. Did I say something wrong? N no. No. Of course not. I was just testing my hearing. Must not upset her. Must not upset her. Yes, I'm sure that's what we searched first. But then I was called back to this courtroom to give testimony. Okay. Holy Press. That was when you were called to the stand after Mr. Tonate's testimony, right? Yes, the bailiff came to courtroom number four and brought me back to this courtroom. And what about Mr. Justice? Did he come with you or did he stay behind? Apollo insisted on staying behind in courtroom number four. Holy. I'd better not ask her about Apollo. I know. I use some small talk here to get her to relax, relax a bit. Did you have any hobbies, Miss Woods? Hobbies? Oh, well, I love growing vegetables in my garden. And I love to knit. I like sewing, too. I made this outfit myself. Keep it up, Mr. Wright. It's working. Now ask her if she has a crush on anyone. Ask her if she has a crush on me. I gotta know. <clears throat> so, um, is there anyone in particular you like right now? Objection. Relevance. Mr. Wright, is that a question even remotely related to this case? To this case? Um, I guess not. Now that you put it that way. Does it have to be? Are we do are we are we doing a oh we're doing a trial. Mr. Wright, you will refrain from asking questions unrelated to the case at hand. Sorry, Your Honor. Minus one to brownie points. 
Hey, Miss Woods, please continue with your testimony. I believe you were telling the court about your attack on Mr. Justice. I swear I didn't attack Apollo. Why would I ever hurt such a kind person? It's true, no motive. So you think Mr. Justice is kind? Yes, very kind. He rescued me. He's like the sun, strong and warm. He makes me feel strong too. He gives my he gives me feelings. The only adjectives I associate with the sun are sweltering and oppressive, but then I'm kind of a pale guy. But then Apollo got hurt and and it's all my fault! <laughs> Junie, Apollo's gonna be fine. He's just like the sun, right? Well, the sun doesn't just drop out of the sky. It just slowly decays over a billion years and then explodes into a supernova and then shrinks into a black hole, obliterating everything that we have around us. But probably not until we're long dead, so don't worry about it. You really think he'll be fine? Hey, <laughs> but the sun does go down at night. Boom. Boom, taking it down, and night's where I live. <laughs> but <laughs> oh, oh, that means Apollo could go down at night. It's the rotation of the Earth. Let's get that straight. Mr. Payne, I do not think much of men who make young ladies cry. Yeah, go, gee, but making ladies cry is my ho shtick. No, <laughs> you can't punch the sun. You can try. So, Apollo was trying to help Juniper. Who knew that Apollo could be such a sweetheart? Must have been pretty hard on him, too, with all that rubble everywhere. Now that I think about it, there's something odd about what Apollo was able to do. You know, considering what Miss Wood said just now, I think you're right. That courtroom was in a very unusual state, after all. Which leaves the million dollar question. What would explain this contradiction? All right, let's see what happens when I present what I suspect is our answer. Hmm. Hmm. Stayed with me, went to the courtroom, was together. Paul said, looking for Bum Ryan near the window stand where there was no rubble. He went where there. Wait, no, that is not the thing. But then, hmm. But then when I was called back to this courtroom to give testimony, Apollo insisted on staying behind in courtroom number four. Apollo started looking for a Brandy near the witness stand where there was no rubble. There's rubble there now. Is this it? Is this a thing? This feels like the inconsistency to me. Because he said there was no rubble. But is there rubble there now? Let's just show the full picture. No, this isn't it. Oh, it is it! Yeah! So he started to search with the witness stand, you say? That's right. I guess maybe he wanted to start from the furthest point in the room. He was being so brave <coughs> and strong. <coughs> but that's odd. Under the circumstances, he shouldn't have been capable of that. But he was, and he still is. He might not look it, but he really is brave and kind, too. No, that's not the part I'm finding fault with. Someone has a crush on Apollo. Spoilers, it's me. Uh, what you're claiming is something that no one should have been able to do. But I should think that anyone can be brave and kind if they wanted to be, Mr. Wright. Why, with the proper upbringing and enough patience, nearly... No, 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 no. So anyone can be brave and kind. But if you would please take a look at this diagram. With the courtroom in this state, how is it possible to walk up to the witness stand? Oh! Hmm, I see your point. The rubble blocks off access to the area around the witness stand. Hmph, <laughs> does such a tiny inconsistency even matter, huh? Do any of this matter? <clears throat> Perhaps the witness is simply misremembering it. Ugh. Great, now I'm not so sure it matters. A real man doesn't make mountains out of molehills, you know? It's like you did with your hair. But it's precisely what Mr. Wright does best. I call slander, Your Honor. Suing you for slander. So, was it really impossible to approach the witness stand? I have to say it's a bit hard to tell with any accuracy from just this diagram. 
Mr. Payne, do you have any other photos of the crime scene that you could submit into evidence? Uh, let me see, Your Honor. Ah, yes, I have one more. Here it is, uh, a more pulled back version of the photo I presented before. Apollo's assault photo updated in the court record. Okay, same evidence. We just have another photo. Hmm. It's blocked by the thing. That's the thing. You can't get to it because the thing's there. The thing. Huh? What's that hunk of metal on wheels? Mr. Payne, is the metallic object in that photo Mr. Tonate's bomb transport case? That's right. Is there some, uh, problem? Ah, oh, yes. That transport gate was there in courtroom number four when the bomb went off. It must have been there ever since. Oh, that's it. Miss Woods, have you remembered something? Yes, I just realized. It's position. It's different from before. It's position? The position of what? Um, the position of that big metal thing. The bomb transport case? Yeah, yes. Uh, when Apollo and I went there, it was in a different place. Where the case is in the photo was open space, so it was easy to search the stand. I see. So where was the transport case when you and Mr. Justice saw it? As I recall, I think it was more to the right. To the right? Then that means... In that case, the case was over there at the time of Apollo's attack. On top of the word woods. Who cares where the transport case was when? What difference does it make? It has nothing at all to do with what we were talking about. Where the transport case was has everything to do with this discussion. Everything. It's the entire case. In fact, it's so important that it's enough to turn the prosecution arguments argument right on its obviously fake hair. I mean, its ear. Uh, what? Well, that certainly sounds very relevant indeed. And you sound as though you know where the case was at the time of the attack. Yes, Your Honor. This diagram represents the crime scene as shown in the photo. And this is where the transport case was at the time of the assault on Mr. Justice. All right, I have this. The bomb transport case was here. It was right there. Present. Your Honor. I assert that this is where the transport case was at the time of the assault. But that's... <laughs> Inconceivable! <sighs> Miss Woods, was this where the transport case was when you saw it? Yes! Yes, that's where it was! Thank you, Miss Woods. I'm sure the court has noted... Uh, no, 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 no. I didn't read it, sorry. The transport case covers up the writing in blood! Exactly. If the transport case was in the position at the time of the assault, then no message could have been written there because the case was in the way. Which leads us to conclude that Mr. Justice couldn't have left that bloody writing. Objection. Why would she believe the defendant's claim that the case that was in a different position? She's obviously lying. Objection. The fact that the case was moved after the assault on Mr. Justice is proved by more than Miss Wood's testimony alone. What? And where's this proof you're talking about? It's right here in the crime photo. Hmm. I'm keen to see this proof myself, Mr. Wright. What in this photo indicates that the case was moved after the assault? This got tire tracks. It's got really dark tire tracks. Like, kind of weirdly dark tire tracks. All the proof you'll need, Your Honor, is right here? What? No, I had it! You're just taking a wild step in the dark, aren't you? Ouch, you're good. Uh. No! No! That's a bunch of crap. That's a bunch of malarkey. Oh! It's the fact that the tire tracks are on top of his bandage. That's the important part. Fine.
Please take a look at the mark that runs over Mr. Justice's bandages here. I see it, but what is it? This mark was made by one of the casters from the transport case carrying the bomb. As the case was moved, it ran over his bandages. In other words, the transport case was originally to the right of Mr. Justice. Then after Mr. Justice was assaulted, the transport case was moved. What? Just as Mr. Wood said, the case was covering the waiting writing at the time of the assault. Therefore, it was impossible for Mr. Justice to have left that message in blood. No! You did it, boss. It was a real nail biter, but you pulled it off after that weird part where you were just making stuff up. Yep. That should bring down the prosecution's claim like a house of cards. Checkmate.